Moving on from our actual CPU chips, our CPU and our motherboard chipsets, we're actually going to now talk about our jumpers on our computer. Jumpers are the small pins which are located around our computer. They can be in sets as small as two or they can be in larger bunches. Now these jumpers can change different settings about our computer. Um, they can provide different power to uh, the power buttons, uh, front panel displays. With every motherboard it's different and every motherboard comes with information as far as which each of these jumpers actually control. For example, on our motherboard here, we have jumpers at the bottom here, and the center white one actually controls our front fan. You'll also notice there are usually jumpers over near your CMOS. These allow us to reset a password if there's been one set onto our BIOS. Say a previous computer owner reset or set a BIOS password and now we've inherited the computer and we need to change that. Normally we can remove the jumper block, restart the computer, sometimes remove the jumper block and remove the BIOS battery and replace the BIOS battery and we can reset that password. Now I just mentioned a jumper block. The jumper block is actually the small plastic block with metal inserted inside of it which connects the two jumper points together. On a computer motherboard from a side view we have two jumper pins which are the two standing metal pieces. In order to connect these jumper pins we have our jumper block which is typically made out of plastic and has metal inserted inside of it which we actually take and we place on top of the pins to connect them. If we're not using the jumper block to connect the pins we can hang it off of one or if we have a jumper that has multiple pins, different configurations of the jumper block on the pins can account for different settings. Those all depend, of course, on you want to check out your motherboard information. So, we've talked about our jumper pins. Now, what actually gives our motherboard power? How do we press the power button on our computer and how does it receive power? Um, and how does it disseminate that power to other components on our computers? Our motherboard actually has different types of power connectors. As we can see on this motherboard, we have one located down here and we have another one located up here. Typically these are small, these are block connectors. The largest one typically being a 20 pin main power connector. Our motherboard power actually comes in through the use of our power supply, which we install on in our computer. When we buy our computer fully made straight from the manufacturer, this power supply is made, or this power supply will definitely give ample supply uh, power to our computer and anything we may plug into our motherboard. If you're building your own computer though, some research is necessary in order to, deter to determine the power supply that gives enough power to whichever components you may need. When we open up our computer, we see we have our large block up here, which receives the power of course from our power cord and it gives our power to our motherboard. The power supply may also power other components such as our CD, uh, CD player, or hard drive, etc. But our main connector for our motherboard will be our big 20 pin connector right here, typically. This will go into our motherboard and give it the main source of power. A lot of our PCI slots do give a little bit of power to the particular components that are plugged into them. Say if we have a PCI slot that we need to plug a Ethernet cable into or an Ethernet uh, adapter into, we can plug that into there and it's going to give it enough power to operate what it needs to do. Certain connections um, such as accelerated graphics cards may need additional power uh, that just the slot itself won't provide. Uh, there may be additional points on your motherboard uh, such as this one here, which can provide additional power to those particular components if they need it. In addition to the actual 20 pin motherboard connector, we have an additional 4 pin Molex cable, uh, which is what would provide the computer with power to, say, the hard drive. We have a 4 pin Molex connector, and then there's also a SATA power connector. Now this is actually a SATA to Molex or Molex to SATA converter. We have a SATA hard drive inside of this computer, but the power supply only powers with a Molex connector. And we need to change that. 
So this provides a connection that goes from a four pin Molex to a SATA power connector and is a good demonstration of the differences between the two. Whereas the, um, whereas the Molex is more of a four prongs, SATA is several more prongs and it's a much flatter and more thin power connector. Additional fans may be plugged into the motherboard and these may be small fans that are just plugged into uh, say a small four square power connector such as that one. This may normal this will normally power fans say such as the one that would sit on top of the CPU here and the additional fan would just plug into that four prong connector right there.